Good evening. I wrap Stina Flynn and Associates with her financial market wrap up for this Tuesday, October 6, 2020, at 625 p.m. Central Time. So one of the president's first actions as he comes out of the hospital and has his first full day home is what? He instructs Mr. Mnuchin and the other negotiators to stop negotiating. They're getting nowhere. Ms. Pelosi in his statement said she's not negotiating in good faith. And he said, stop the negotiations. We'll wait till after the election. Of course, she reacted uh, as she normally does and said that the president doesn't care about the American people. Basically, he doesn't want to give in to the Democrats' wishes, in her opinion, and the need that the people have. Blah, blah. You know, which side do you want to take? I'm not a politician, so I'm not getting involved in that in any manner, my friends. So the market is still going to count on a COVID package, regardless of who wins the election after the first of the year. But what you did is some traders didn't believe one would happen. I was one of those. And then I said, no, I think it will happen. I've changed back and forth. And now, obviously, I don't have to worry about changing until they say, one is back on. So what you've got now is market disappointment. When you get that disappointment, it took the air out of the metal markets. You're still breaking down in the stock market. You'll get down to levels that we're now going to have to just, if this is the case, focus on the election, who wins, what does it mean for the economy? That's pretty much where you're at. If you if you watch today or read today, Fed Chair Powell speaking before a national economic uh, conference, he wanted something to get done by the government. He's putting the onus on him. He actually gave the president cover to just go make the deal. It may not be the best at this time, but that's it. The president didn't use it. I wrote about that in this morning's report because I read everything I was reading that the Mr. Powell was saying, and he was offering cover left and right to the president. The president decided not to use it. So he could have used that, said that, hey, not what he wanted, not what the Republicans wanted to do, but we need this package. Didn't get it. You're breaking down in the energy markets because that's going to hurt demand. We're going to see it sink back. We saw the EIA today start talking about lack of demand also that's going to be uh, through the rest of this year. But they are raising demand a small amount in 2021. So let's go and take a look at the S&P. The market's been in a corrective mode. I think you see that. It gave back being over this 18 week, the last high here. Remember yesterday, if you saw the tape, we were over it. I pointed out you're only at the first day of the month, so we don't know. You're not back over it now. You got a lot to go. There's three more days of the week. We'll see where it's going to carry us. It's interesting. We have Columbus Day coming up. Is it going to be called Columbus Day anymore? A lot of people think it's the wrong name, and then Columbus was uh, the wrong man and that he had racist views. I don't know what they're going to call that holiday anymore. But when you take a look at the daily bar chart, you can see what we have. We have a, a market that's come back up and it's stalling out. Take a look at the action though. Haven't broken through a prior low. You still have bullish action here. You still have a pattern of higher lows as measured by the swing line. And that's what this is. This is the swing line. You have to take out 3,300.25 to negate that. You made a new high in the market. Where did that go to? Well, it was certainly over the 18 week average, but are you notice, I'm sorry, 18 day. You do realize you're every day on that 18 day moving average of closes. Every single day, practically, uh, you're hitting it. You missed it right here, but look at what's going on. So we know that that's a number that the trade is looking at in some manner, trying to defi define what they want to do with it. When prices are over it, you have an upside bias. When they're under it, you have a downside bias. Right now, the market is still over it. Therefore, even with all this today, I think the pros are nibbling into this long side at 33, 31, 75. They're stopped 3,300.25. Remember, there are those macro mini contracts, one-tenth the size. So that risk is not the $1,500. It'd be a $150 risk if you got in there and you were wrong. A lot of traders use those contracts. They're exceptionally popular. Uh, we charge like a dollar a side commission, so it's pretty interesting there. I think that you can see it's happening here, but where did the rally go to? 
If we take a look, the market got as high as 34.2175. It just missed the Bollinger top at uh, 34.24.90. All right, so that's what the market did there, and then it's coming right back into this 18-day average, which I still think the pros are nibbling at right now. Momentum is the problem. Momentum in the market is now back underneath where it was on the close. If you look at the close, you got into overbought territory because you had a 73 reading. When you get out of that reading, you're no longer overbought. So some of the filters on algos and so on, they don't have to use my 70 number, they could use the traditional 80. Everybody's got something different, but that's the nibbling zone. That's what I think is going on right here, right now, you haven't quite hit that number. And if you get under that number, I think they're back to the drawing table looking for a new trend. In the NASDAQ, a different pattern. You have a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. So it's not a buying pattern. The question is if you close under this 11,217, let's call it, then the market gets into the bearish area. But right here, well, this was a corrective break and you're right at that number. Momentum is down, bias up, swing line down. In the Dow, it's similar to the S&P. With tonight's action, as we've reopened, we're just, the word is just getting out of overbought territory. If I take you to the close, you can see you had a 72 reading. That's pretty close to it, so it's a little dangerous, but I it wouldn't be surprised if you tr see an attempt at support at 27, 490, let's call it 494 just to round it up. Wrong if you get under 27,109. Being wrong on full-size contracts is going to be expensive. That's really a part of the point I'm making. And in the Russell, which has been at the strongest, I'll stay with what I know. And what I know is you missed hitting the Bollinger Band, or did you, right here. The market got as high as 1577.90. You just missed the Bollinger Band yesterday. Today, you hit it. That's where the pros came out. They might have done some yesterday, you were so darn close. But today I feel more comfortable that they took some money off the table in an overbought condition, not trying to embed. I'm pretty comfortable that that's what they did. I don't think you'll see new buying because you're overbought, but that's just my opinion. In the VIX, the VIX has been telling us a story. The market hasn't been even on breaks in the market, uh, breaking down in any manner or rallies. It's been staying over this number. And today's rally obviously really catches the market to the upside. Now it is over the upper Bollinger Band. Gee, first time you hit a Bollinger Band after hitting the 18 day average, what do you think I think the pros do? You know, I think they're taking money off the table right there. So I see a mixed picture all over the place on these markets. In the bond market, yeah, you're racing to get back over the Bollinger Band. Gee, I should be so surprised. You had two days under it, and on the third, you're trying to get over it. You got oversold, and now the market's trying to climb back. I think the bears are waiting for this market at 176.7. And if they're wrong, they're wrong over the 177 level, but I do think they took some money off the table just recently. Ten-year note, I have the same feeling on this market. The trend is down, the bias is down, the market got under the Bollinger Band two days, it's trying to get back over it. If it rallied a lot more, I'd look for the 18-day average to be the bigger resistance. The smaller is the 100 in green at 139.05, but I don't think there's enough there to play with down to the lower Bollinger Band. In the dollar index, it hasn't reopened, but if it takes out 9409, well, this was a failure and an attempt to be bearish. Again, you hit every day the 18-day average. I thought this market was going to get some traction to the downside, especially with the president coming back. I had thought that the Fed Chair Powell today gave him the cover, as I've said. I was dead wrong in that analysis. It happens. In the euro currency, you've pulled back to the 18-day average. Take out 117.12 and a half. It's not going to look so good. Now, 
Remember what time it is right now. You're six to seven hours later. It's getting on to 6.30, so it's still middle of the night there. You'll see what's going on in the morning much better than you do right now. This is still Americans trading the market more than the Europeans. You're gonna to get to the Asian parts and so on, and they're gonna to react to today's uh, presidential decision. In the end, you have a lower and low, higher high. There is no trend, but Pretty interesting, the market didn't get a safe haven bid. It got a bounce, that's all you can call it. And it's giving back a chunk of that in early evening trade. Oversold market, I don't think you're getting anyone too aggressive on the bear side in this. Bitcoin followed gold today more than anything. Outside day down. So if you want to get a bear trap in this market, if you take out this 10,940, to me it would be a sign that the upper Bollinger Band's in play. Don't take it out. The bears have control. They'll probably defend this position right here at 10,820. And the question is, can they break it down at all? Then we get to the energy differentials and between the December contracts of Brent and WTI, you still made a lower low, you're getting a little bounce, but when you look at the energies, you did have a nice rally. Uh, I think the bears lost control today. Uh, this is what I thought was going on. If you rally today to that 18 day average, I thought that they'd defend that position with stops right over this high. That high is not very far away. That high was 42.56, and that's not an awful lot of risk. They lost it today. So now you have a pattern of a lower, low, higher high. In looking back at this, first challenge of the Bollinger Band, what did the market do? Just what I teach you. In November, WTI crude, first challenge of the Bollinger Band. You get that opportunity. That doesn't mean this always works. Nothing always works in charting. But it was certainly what I think the smart money did. Again, I think the pros were selling today in the uh, November, and I think they got stopped out over that high, and now you don't have a trade. But that break gave them an awful lot of fodder to play with. In the gasoline, you're not trending. You've gone from a breakdown right up to the upper Bollinger Band, and boom. The market's letting go again. API numbers tonight, uh, there was a net draw between everything of a million barrels. That's not very bullish. It's pretty neutral, if anything. And in the nat gas, you keep failing on these rallies from under it back to the 18-day average. And that seems to be all that's taking place there. I want you to remember all the research that our group offers, okay? Uh, normally, I'd say from the Board of Trade, but you know, we're all writing from home. No one's in our offices. We have our new phone systems coming in tomorrow, so our portable phones will not only record, but all the calls you make to us, we can take on them. It's a brand new system that we've got. I applaud our firm for getting it. It's quite a neat little thing. Uh, we can now hold meetings with you right through our phone system. You don't even need a Zoom. We just send you a link in the password while you're on the phone with us. Boom, it's like that, can explain things instantly. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. We write about all this. We have a staff that's writing from everywhere, as I told you. For those of you that trade grains and so on, we have our own meteorologist on staff, two of them actually, and we go with that. Those of you that like David Hightower, his ideas about uh, the financial markets, the softs, it's right there. Metal markets, he puts out three different tapes a day for these. I, of course, offer my own research, but not here. Mine is separate. I've decided to go to a pay-per-view. I have a lot of followers. Why not? That's where my career is taking me into the research side of it, besides the brokerage. And I realized that, and you would, you know, you change with it. Do you ever read the book about the cheese and the mouse? Well, the cheese moved. You move with the cheese. But the cheese moves on you. And while you're out there and none of you like to look for the information, want everything for free, what I've learned over time is free is what it's worth. If you're going to follow, example, all the Bloomberg articles and you don't have a Bloomberg subscription, you get a headline and that's about it. Uh, and our information, you get to try it. Our accounts get it for free, but they're paying us because they, they're an account, they're trading with us. My people that take the full research, this is included in it as well. So something you might want to consider. If you would, all you need to do is give us a call. You can see what's going on through here, and we'll be happy to include you in that. Uh, 
Go to www.irapstein.com, free offers, take a look. And if you want to find out more about my videos or my charting course, at the top of the website, you'll see research for what I do with my videos, my subscriber videos, and the charting course is under education. Long talking tonight, didn't want to do that, but there's so much to discuss. I'm Ira, you have a good day, I'll see you tomorrow.